Today is June 15th. Welcome to Kennywood or Cedar Point or whatever. 2023 season is a roller coaster. What is going on? Let's talk about it. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh and I am joined as always by my brother Jake. What's up? How's it going, man? I'll tell you what, this roller coaster has just been rough. Yeah, we actually thought we weren't going to get Jake tonight. I bet he's super pumped about being on here tonight after a sweep (laughs) in Chicago. Oh, gosh. It's frustrating, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about the Cubs series, the roller coaster that we're referencing, obviously, uh, the bullpen, the pitching woes, and we'll look ahead of the Brewers. Uh, Pretty simple... Uh, you know, pretty simple blueprint for tonight. Uh, the one question I have is, do we start with like a good news thing right out of the gate? Or do we save it to try to salvage any sort of pot? Nope, let's go right out of the gate. <laughs> Anthony Salamito. So, yeah, that's it, right? Salamito, yeah. Anthony Salamito promoted from high A Greensboro to double A Altoona. He's been pitching very good. Kyle Nicholas from Altoona to AAA Indianapolis. So a couple little promotions by some of our pitching prospects. Um, We'll give him one. It's a pretty good one. Because I think they both have pretty much earned it. Salamito, I know, has looked really good. Just still 20 years old. Already hitting AA. Um, That's a good sign. Yeah. Hope for I, they both are going to start Saturday. So part of this weekend if you want to look forward to either Indianapolis or Altoona depending on where you go with Salamito or Kyle Nicholas um there you go. Me personally, I kind of wish Kyle Nicholas was a bullpen guy because I feel like he'd be here now if he was. Um however, yeah. You know, they, they're still wanting him starting, and it's, you know, it's kind of hard to uh, to really disagree with that right now. Is he on the roster? I didn't even pay attention when I was on there. No, not yet. He's not on Indy's roster quite yet. So, um, boy, I thought that they announced that that was happening. Salamito. Okay, so the... Salamito move is official as far as the site. The Kyle Nicholas one, no. But you know what? It's good news. So why don't we yeah. go ahead? Why don't we go ahead and touch this? I mean, he he's he went. He was low A last year. Um, in Bradenton, he pitched thirteen games, eight starts, forty seven innings. 57 or 51 strikeouts, 19 walks, 1.05 whip, 264 ERA. Good numbers. Yeah. And then he goes to high A this year. And in 12 starts, those are the only games he pitched, you know, clearly. Uh, 12 starts, 116 whip with a 230 ERA, uh, 68 strikeouts in 58 and two thirds. 25 walks. Um, I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, he's pitched in 25 games now in his career so far, and opponents are hitting 198 against him right now. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. It's Yeah, it's good stuff. And so he gets the call up to double A, 20 years old, 
Um, <clears throat> he won't be 21 until December. So I would imagine this is where he stays the rest of the year. But this could be a guy who's moving quick. Yeah. Kudos I to you, I, man. Yeah, I, I, w- I wish I could actually see some of his, some of his stuff. You don't have the well. You don't have MLB Network yet, or I'm sorry, MLB I always do this TV. MLB TV because the the minor leagues are all included in that this year. Yeah, um, I have not watched him pitch yet, but I'm going to be paying attention. I I might watch that Saturday, depending on uh, yeah, it depends on what we're going to do. We may be heading to the zoo. Okay. Yeah, might be fun. Yeah. I'm going to see if they'll let me pet a cheetah or something. Yeah, like you can name him Jason Statham. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A little 21 Pilots reference there. Yep, a little 21 Pilots reference there. All right, so let's go ahead and get moving on this because I know that we we, we started to talk before we hit record and I said, hey, Jake, let's save it because yeah. we basically can just have this conversation Um I mean, as far as covering the series, like we got swept, guys, and it was kind of ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, but bigger picture than that, the roller coaster that we feel like we're on right now. And I think this is just something that we're all kind of, as pirate fans, I think we're all kind of na- trying to navigate depending on who you are and what you're thinking and what you want to believe or what you believed coming into the year. You know, there's all these different scenarios that kind of, you know, wrap up all the different um, types of Pirate fans for the 23 season, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of a, you know, where you, if if you want to be negative, then you're finding a way to be negative. If you want to be positive, you come back with, but we're still in first, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a little bit of that kind of everywhere. Um, essentially right now, I mean, the Pirates are a... We're 500 ball club. I know we're 34 and 33. We're one game over, but we're basically right there. Yeah. So we start off April red hot. We fall into May and we're terrible. And it felt like that roller coaster was starting, but it was big hills. You know, you get on the roller coaster and the first hill's real big. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Now we're doing the little hills. We, We sweep a series. We lose a series. We win a series. We get swept. So here we are. That's how many games. You know what I'm saying? That's, um, that's 12 games. We're six and six. So you're you're essentially in June so far. You're playing 500 ball, and uh, I I kind of feel like that. I, maybe I would pick them in different places. Like coming into the year, you would have thought, well, maybe we'd get swept by the Cardinals <laughs> and sweep the Cubs, or I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there was a little bit of Cubs love, so maybe it was swept by the Mets, beat the Cubs. Sweep the athletics. Maybe that was kind of the, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of how you felt that if you were going to say you go six and six in these games and ask you to draw it up, I don't know that it you would have necessarily drew it up the way you did, but it doesn't matter. In the end, you're six and six. You're 500 team. I don't know where you want to start with this. Do you think that the, the confusion and the frustration it really just stems from the fact that we're still in first place. I think I think that has a lot to do with it because I mean we both picked St. Louis to win the division. Yeah. And they have the worst record in the National League right now. It's Do they again? I believe so. That's I'll check it. You keep talking. As far as earlier today cuz they were I know they were talking about it on MLB Network yeah, they this do. morning. They do. So it, it's just it's weird the 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 whole league in general. First off, I want to say the balanced schedule, like everybody plays everybody, has really impacted. I feel like the game as far as wins and losses, 
because we're not playing our division a gajillion times a year. So this sweep against the Cubs is kind of a big deal. Um, we don't yeah. have as many games against the Cubs, and this is the first time we're playing them all year, and they're three and zero against us. Yeah, and we turn around and play them next week again. Yeah. So I mean, we're we're gonna we need to owe them. You know, I mean, we're gonna have to get after it. Yeah. But but, but yeah, I think the conf- a lot of the confusion is stems from that being still being in first place because this is still a very winnable division for every team in it. <laughs> and we're just sitting here on this roller coaster and we feel like we're in first place. We should be playing a lot better. Yeah. I mean, eight, eight, the, the Cardinals are the worst team. They're eight games back. So it doesn't. I mean that that's the same that that the the uh, Phillies are back in their division. You know what I mean. And so like yeah. you, it is a sizable deficit. But like when when you got the whole division playing basically five hundred ball, do you feel mm-hmm. like you kind of still have a chance? I mean the White Sox certainly can't give up their chance, and they're they're five games back at thirty and thirty nine. I mean, Detroit probably doesn't like their chances. They're only six games back. I'm just looking at the AL, the AL Central because they're just as bad. Yeah. Both teams in the Central have a 507 win percentage of 35 and 34, and they're leading their division. We're 34 and 33, but it's still a 507 winning percentage. And team number two, well, and there's Cleveland, 31 and 36. They would they would actually be. Uh, in fourth place in our division. They're in second place in their division. Obviously, uh, with the winning streak by Oakland, they have overtaken. Um, have they overtaken Kansas city yet? Mm, yes. Kansas city is now the worst team in all of baseball. Not that it's a competition between the AL central and the NL central. It's certainly not right. like it's a comp. You play your division. You try to win your division. But I gotta think, and and I, I would imagine if I talk to uh, to Cleveland fans and uh, and and maybe some other AL Central fans, it's a little bit of a bummer in a way because if you win your division as like a 500 team, you're gonna jump all the way up in the <laughs> in the mm-hmm. draft and not really get a shot at maybe some players. You know what I mean? Where you know when we look at we look at the pirates and we say our rebuild we were supposed to start winning in 24 here we are in first place in 23 how is that how does that mess with your rebuild at all <laughs> if you're not going <laughs> to i mean but there is no tanking right i mean i'm not saying right. we're we're certainly not tanking it looks like the team is trying to win games um but I, I don't know. Let's let's just keep talking through this because I think this is good conversation. And I think a lot of people are asking a lot of the same questions that we are. Um, and I know I just kind of went off one, but we're going to go off a few more tangents probably. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> probably, just because yeah. as we as we kind of talk about these different things. But I know you had a couple other points that, that you were wanting to make here. Yeah, and so I like like where we like you said, 24 was kind of supposed to be our year. But now here we are. We're sitting here. It's, it's um, you know mid June now, and we're still in first place in a very again a very winnable division. Winnable division. Yep. I mean, do, do we don't quite with the injuries and everything that we have through our system, don't quite have that depth we thought we had, and now like there might be a couple pitchers out on the market. Do we do we try to go out and get somebody like a Dylan Cease like? The White Sox are gonna. They're, they're probably gonna. Well, we don't know. They, they're in another. Don't. They're in the same. They're in the same boat. You're not wrong. They're in a winnable division. Yeah, I mean, you it just, makes it really it's hard. Tough. Uh, the thing is, so my answer to that would be no. I I don't think you go out. I don't think. It depends on what, you know, when you start competing with people, there's going to be somebody that's going to offer a bigger package. I don't think that you jump into something like that because if you do and you do it too early or you 
excuse me, if you do it when you're maybe not ready for it, I, I that's the thing that I that I kind of struggle with is regardless of whether we could win the division or not. And, and I want to know, like, I want, like, you as the listener, I want to know where you're at with this because there's a, there's kind of a, um, there's kind of a balance here. Is winning the division something that you're, that you can kind of hang your hat on and say, well, we were division champs that year? Or is it going to be one of those things where you're like, we were division champs when we, we won 86 games? And we were division champs, you know what I mean? Or 85 games and we were division champs. So then it would be like, well, the only reason you were division champs is because your division stunk. Well, yeah, you're right. But right now, the model that we play under, we play under divisions. So does it matter? Do you look back? Because 50 years from now, you're going to say the Pirates have won X amount of divisions. They're not going to be like, well, but there was that one back in 23. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like they shouldn't have won that one. There's probably already one that somebody's won that you felt was cheap. That's fine. It do, you know, do you just count it? Is that important to you? Because I'll tell you right now, let's say the Pirates win the division and let's say they win it with something like 84, 85 wins because this is where we're at right now. Right. You're not making a run in the postseason. Dylan Cease are not. <laughs> I don't see them. I don't know, though. I mean, we saw what they did in April. That's all it takes. Right. Right. That's all it takes is just to have a run like that. And then you're there. But but it's difficult to see at this point, right? It's difficult right. to imagine yeah. that this team would make a run in the postseason against the likes of, of Atlanta right now and, and L.A. at that point. Maybe even Arizona. Who knows? I mean, dude, right now Miami is in second place in the East. So if you Mm -hmm. want to talk about balanced schedule, is that really – you think balanced schedule is impacting the fact that we have teams that maybe a lot of us don't see as good in positions to, like, you know what I mean? Like to be in the mix. I I don't – Miami's a playoff team if the season ends right now. I don't know what else to attribute it to. It's a weird year. It is a. It's been a very weird year, and it, Tampa and the and the and the start that they've had, and the and the fact that they're still winning the way that they're winning, yeah. Texas still hasn't caught up to them yet, and they're playing so well. Which we saw Texas kind of coming. You were a little high on them early mm-hmm. in the season, and I kind of said it's Seattle. Seattle's thirty three and thirty four and in fourth place. <laughs> You know, Toronto, I mean the the AL East is still kind of uh is still kind of really good. Yeah. But I didn't see Baltimore being this far up this early. I right. still think they're a good team. I thought they had a chance to make some noise, but I thought that the Yankees and the Blue Jays were just too good. I don't know. Maybe it is a balanced schedule thing. Cleveland should be better. They have a better team than the way that they're playing. It shows you, though, that a lot of the hitting statistics and a lot of the hitting successes that they had last year, those things, they're not guarantees. You got to repeat it. You got to play the games. And they've got some of those guys that were great last year that are struggling this year. And um, I I mean, they're in a very winnable division. So I think they've got as good a shot as any to win that still at this point. Yeah. But I mean, they're already talking about Bieber on the way. So this goes right back. Let's bring it back to your conversation. You, They're talking about Bieber. Are they going to ship Bieber out? Because even if they're trying to go for the division, they could do that. Cleveland yeah. has a way of developing young arms, getting them to the majors, pitching them in effect, er, very effectively and in effective situations. I keep saying ineffective situations, and it sounds like I'm saying they're ineffective. Very <laughs> effective situations. <laughs> Right. And then they trade them and they stink for the rest of their career, basically. Or something happens and they fall apart. That's not that's not all the time, right? But I don't want to trade with Cleveland for a pitcher. I don't want Kluber on my team after he left Cleveland, right? I mean, Kluber, but I'd take Cliff Lee or CC Sabathia. That's fair. 
<laughs> I don't, but that was a different regime, right? That wasn't the same development crew that, that, I mean, but you look at like, you look at Clevenger, you look, even Bauer. I mean, Bauer got elite when he said, if you're going to let people cheat, I'm going to cheat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he said, like, I'm cheating and you won't stop it. Like he was doing it to make a point. Yeah. Regardless of any of the other things, right? We're talking about. Right, right. You know, pitching. But you got, you know, there, there's there been other guys to leave and just not been the same after they leave Cleveland for whatever reason. Is it the system that they're running? Is it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. But then again, maybe Bieber becomes the same pitcher if he's pitching to hedges. I don't <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is like, no, I'm not giving anybody up for him right now. But not because like I'm I want a prospect hoard. Like that's not it for me, right? That's not my that's not what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is I, I just I'm not sure that it there's an impact there right now. Yeah. I guess if a guy's got some more years of control, I saw there was another name I saw and I can't think of who it is now. Oh, it was um somebody from Colorado. Who's the kid from Colorado, the lefty who signed a deal? He's he's owed money for the next four or five years. Freeland. Oh yeah. There was yeah, a question Freeland. about Freeland. Is that is that somebody that you go after? I'm just not sure you do. I think if you're yeah. having success in, in Colorado, I'm asking why. <laughs> and I'm just not sure that like it's it goes elsewhere. You know what I mean? Like what what are you doing that's so different that works? <laughs> and and how could it not work if we bring you in here? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I I don't see maybe the Bieber thing that because maybe there's a there's a bit of a dip is that is that much different than the Chris Archer deal? Like could you imagine? Yeah, and it's going to it's going to it would depend on who you'd have to get up to get I think that I think that they should check in on some of these pitchers. I don't necessarily think that they have to I don't think they have to make a deal. I don't think they have to, you know, throw out big chips, but I think I think they need I think checking in and seeing, you know, what would it take? All right, yeah, that's too high and move on. Or hmm, maybe we could swing something with this if you know, we got the cuz there there are there are some players that we have in our organization that I think that you could use as a trade chip that maybe we we already kind of know a little bit like we don't have room for them. Yeah. That's, Even if it's like a Cal Mitchell, like yeah. somebody like that. But I, I don't know that yeah. he lands you. I don't know that he lands you Dylan Cease or Shane B. No, no. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to throw in somebody super young and good. So. No. And I seen, and I seen a comment that says, you know, you never know when another GM like would like Cal Mitchell the way that Sherrington liked to compete Marcano. Right. Where that didn't make sense. And it was like, well, we, we will give you Marcano in this deal because, you know, he really liked Marcano. And so you never know if there's somebody looking at Cal Mitchell in the same way. That's a fair enough point. I, um, but for me, it's do you take a do you take a, a chance? On someone like that, someone like a Bieber or a Cease is different. Cease is an uh, Bieber, to me, there's a little risk involved. Sure. Kyle Freeland, there's a little bit of a risk involved. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know what I mean? So, But Cease, to me, is a little more of a guarantee, and I think you are going to have to give up some serious uh, players for, for Dylan Cease. I think if they decide to deal him, it is probably out of like, well, we could, we could get a good package here. Right. However... So let's talk about the two, meaning because I don't think you're getting cease, right? I don't think they're no, gonna do I, that. I don't either. I just, you know, sure. And and but just for the sake of the of the conversation, if it is one of these guys that you might be thinking like, oh, maybe maybe there's a little bit of a risk. Maybe he can just put us over the edge, um, you know, so we don't have to give away huge, you know, capital for it. We can maybe just sprinkle in like a, a you know highly rated young guy, and then maybe a Cal Mitchell or somebody like that. Like you're saying, if they were interested in like a Mitchell or a, a CSN or a, I mean, I don't know who else 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you could even say like a Nick Gonzalez or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? Even if you had to go a little bit further and, and whatever. I, do you feel better about something like that? Or do you feel better about taking a waiver on just saying like, all right, Quinn Priester, like, here's your shot. We got to get innings. Let's see what you're made of. All right, Kyle Nicholas, if it's going well in AAA, like, let's bump one more. Let's see what you got. You're already got Beto up there. You're going to give him a look right now. Yeah. Because you kind of need to. You got Velat. We're, we're rolling, by the way. We're rolling right into our other topic, which is, which is uh, you know, bullpen or pitching roles. Right now we're on the starting pitching, but, you know, I said roles. I meant woes. Not good. <laughs> Not yeah. good. Um, but, you know, you got Vince Velasquez. He's done for the year. You got Mike Burroughs done for the year. <laughs> At this point, how much faith do you have in Roanzi Contreras getting back in this rotation this year? Give me a percentage. L- let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Give me your percentage of chance that he earns his spot in the rotation this season? 70%. You think 70%. Did you actually watch what happened in that game last night? Like, were you able to to go back and re-watch the inning? No. And you were on this. You were on this. You were saying, this is the right move. Bullpen. Learn a new fastball. Do something. Yeah, I mean, he's he's going to be learning that in the bullpen. Like, 50 I don't 50 say, for me, man. I don't want to say in Maybe. the bullpen as in, like, in his role. He's going to be working on this on the side. He ain't going to use it in the game yet. I, he's got to he's got to get comfortable with it before he can just bring it in. Yeah, but that's good. But, like, what I don't know, like, what I'm seeing, I mean, I'm thinking Mitch Keller vibes all over again. And I don't mean what he did last year. I mean what he did the year before that when it was a deer in a headlights look yeah. and it's just a, I don't know what to do now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this isn't the, I, I made a change. Like Mitch Keller made a change going into last year and we were all excited and it didn't work. But then all of that work that he did, he was able to flip into something else. This might be that, like, the next offseason could be that offseason for Rowanzi. And maybe I'm overreacting, but, I, I mean, I could sit here and talk myself into a 35% chance he's back in the rotation this year. But, like I said, I, I mean, I just, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like, I think it could possibly be that bad. How would I have done things? He would have thrown that one good inning and I'd have got him out of there. Yeah. The problem is, I don't know if I want to go there yet because I'm because I'm shifting to the bullpen here and I'm not sure we were ready for that yet. Let's go back to the conversation about Quinn Priester. So right now we've got, you know, we've got a five-man rotation. We've got Keller, we've got Hill, we've got Oviedo, we've got Ortiz. And we at this very moment we've got Osvaldo Beto. You got Roanzi in the bullpen, trying to figure some things out. You're gonna have some other guys. You know what I mean? There's gonna yeah. have to be somebody else, whether it's a short stint on an IL, whether it's a wrist inflammation issue, <laughs> like you got with Holderman right now. Um, you know, whatever it is. There's go like it's not going to be those five guys the rest of the way, right? So does that mean Rowanzi's worked his way back in? Possibly, but it's still not going to be just those five guys. Like you're going to need to figure it out. So Beto's going to get some opportunities, but who's next? And that's kind of where I'm at. Like there, we're not doing like are we doing this wait? Like oh somebody's on waivers, let's pick him up and give him three four starts. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, but at that point, that. 
at that point, you're already in third place. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and th- and that's what I'm. That's why I was saying, you know, should you start exploring some trades? I uh, so when it comes to that, it goes right back to: Would you feel better about you know promoting a Quinn Priester? I know that like they've been bo- they've been boosting his his no they've been like you know hey. Priester again, you know, and I'm like four walks, man. (laughs) Like, let's pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. Like they keep putting up these stat lines like they're great. And I'm seeing this walk uh, line and saying, "Uh, you got to do better than that. Right. So either way, he's been a little hit and miss, but he's still got good stuff. If they do you ever say, do you feel better about not getting rid of anyone, but just saying, let me see what you got. Vince Velasquez technically is still on the 15 day injured list. He's done. Yeah. So, and I think we even have room on the 40 man still. I know Beto was just added, so I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure there. I didn't get to check that before we started here. So, but all you have to do is throw Vince on the 60 day and you've got another spot available on that 40 man. Uh, eventually as I mean, we're talking long term here. Yeah. Eventually sometime late July, sometime in August, you're going to talk about O'Neill Cruz coming off of it. Eventually at some point is Harleen Garcia ever going to pitch? Is, is he going to come off of this thing? I don't know. Right. Will Crow. I don't know what his is. His, is his season done? I'm actually not yeah, sure. G Man Choi comes off this 60 days. So there's a lot of guys that are coming off too. Yeah. And so it's not as easy as just putting a guy on and then calling up somebody. Mike Burroughs could be, well, Mike Burroughs won't be put on the 60 day, even though he's out for the year because Mike Burroughs hasn't been called up yet, which means if you put him on the 60 day, his clock starts. Hmm. You know what I mean? So there, uh, I believe that's how that goes. Like if he, as soon as he's on the 60 day injured list, he's, he's, uh, he's gaining my major league service time. Huh. Not a smart move <laughs> for a all. guy that you think is going to be good. Right. Um, Colin Selby's still hurt. He's the same thing. He's not on any kind of injured list or anything. As far as the pirates are concerned, he is on, a seven day list in Indianapolis, but you know, that that's where I'm at though. Kyle Nicholas, um, is kind of that thing uh, is, is a, is a possibility. I mean, to say maybe this guy gets a shot, you know, just to say, yeah. just, I mean, would you feel better about that than going out and getting a trade? Me personally, I think I would. I think I'd rather just see what I got there. Short stints, August, September, kind of stuff like that. Like, give me, you know, four or five starts. Give you a little taste, of, give you a little cup of coffee and see, okay, th- this is what I know I need to work on kind of thing. Hey, this works well. This translates. This doesn't. Right. Well, yeah, and, I mean, and not I mean, only that, not... but like, is is that going to be a way to push to win a division? I I think you play as well as you can with who you have right now. If you win a division, you win a division. I just have a hard time leaping for something that is. I'm not sure how good the accomplishment really is. Yeah, I, I mean, don't I know. I don't know. I you see still what get to wear. I see what you're saying you still get you to still wear a shirt. Like, yeah, you get to wear <laughs> the shirt, and you get to you get a shot in the postseason. And you know how it goes. Anything can happen. In the you get post-season. to host a postseason game if you win a division. So I mean, series. Yeah, a series. Yeah, likely a wild card series. Yeah, we'll have a wild card team coming into Pittsburgh for a three game series. Right. Because we're a division winner. So, I mean, that's exciting. 
I just wonder if if us as Pirate fans are still treating this team the same way we are right now while we're winning a division. Or do we get on board and say, just catch lightning? I mean, I know we will. But like, for all the, you know what I mean, for all the very justified negative Pirates fans right now, mm-hmm. they're going to still be negative justified, justified negative Pirates fans in September. Even if we're in position to win a lousy division. I don't know. I don't know how you get excited about that. I don't know if it hurts your your draft. To be honest with you, it probably doesn't. I mean, these drafts, they are great. But unless you have a top five pick, you know what I'm saying? Like Mike Trout yeah. went, what, 17th in the first round or something like that? Like, you know what I mean? Like you don't, you could, you could, you could come across somebody good. Yeah. No matter where you're at there. Right. So it's not necessarily the end of the world if you don't have a top five or top ten pick. Right. The draft is it's just so much different than it is in other sports. Do you, you think take, you think do you, you take think, a one one you take a one one in football, basketball, or hockey, they're making a they're making an impact on your yeah. pro level team. Immediately. Immediately. With a huge contract, and it's like, yeah, but they got that guy. Yeah. Changes their season. And that's never a thing in baseball. It's not the thing, yeah. Hey, Skeens or Cruz? Oh, my gosh. I hope it's Cruz. Or or neither. I hope it's Cruz. Okay. It's out there for you guys. Jake hopes it's Cruz. I think if you don't, I, I think if you don't uh, overthink it, then I think you I think you pick Cruz one one. I think if you had the three or four pick, you'd be really excited about who you were getting. Mm-hmm. But I I think if you don't overthink this, then I think Skeens goes Dynamic probably in the top five. Filler. You got uh I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. But there's a couple other outfielders too. There's like two other outfielders that would be legit players and and legit you know, pickups. I mean, shoot, in the top 10, you can might even end up with, like, Jack Wilson's kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and maybe he turns out to be something. I mean, there's pedigree there. Yeah. Anytime that you're you're in that sort of situation. All right, so let's, let's kind of flow this into Colin Holderman goes on the injured list. Um, right wrist inflammation. Sure, take two weeks off and think about what you've been doing and get back after it. <laughs> Phantom injury, you think? I, that's the way I feel about it. A little bit of a rough patch there. It's not from overuse. I think we can say that. I think they've right. They've tried to do that very well, and I I don't see the numbers to prove that that's the case. However. Right. This bullpen has been a strength for this team. And especially in this past series, uh, man, I'm just not confident at all. Yeah. It's, it's definitely definitely one of the, uh, what do you want to call it, the valley in a coaster? So this is one of our down spots right now. And, and I think there's still plenty of, good innings in the bullpen. It's just you're a little less confident in those good innings because you're not sure who you're not sure what pitcher's coming out. And it I don't need I don't mean a name. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, it's not about the name. You're not sure who you're getting no matter which guy you bring out there. Right. That's a great point. And it doesn't matter. Johan Ramirez, we've all been sitting here watching him be really good. And then we've all at the same time been like, yeah, but when, <laughs> and then it happened, you're like, I knew, I knew, I knew it wasn't good. You know what I mean? It's like, hold <laughs> on a second. Like, we don't really know, but at the same time, it does kind of make you feel like what, you know, what do you believe? And Holderman's out, which means somebody's got to take that eighth inning at this point. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's going to be Dowry Moretta to get the opportunity. Uh, I don't know if they've come out and said that, but I, I, I mean, I would just imagine that that's who they're going to give it to. And I'm right. not, 
I'm not sure how he's going to respond. Like I, I've been really impressed with his season. I don't know how, um, I don't know how different roles we've talked about this. If there's guys on base, that's the guy I want you to bring in. Yeah. Um, and some of those, and he's let a, a few runs score. But it's bound to which happen. Is, yeah, it's, it's okay. Same, which is okay. Yep. You know, but it comes back to that. There's there's this little bit of a trend right now where these guys are are down a little bit, and they're all kind of hitting this at the same time. We've got three lefties out there. Why are we hanging on to Zestrisny? I just don't get it. Yeah, you get rid of him, you still have Perdomo and and Hernandez, and maybe is there something there where I know Hernandez, you know, I mean, once again, once again, at any point, you can have a bad outing. Hernandez only gets one out. He gives up two runs, one of them unearned in the game tonight. But I don't know that that's like, he's still been pitching well. Yeah. And he's starting to earn a a few different spots, I think, to see how well. But at the same time, you're also like, wouldn't it be nice to just get to the end of the year? I'm not saying this is me, but wouldn't it be nice to just get to the end of the year and have a couple guys we can say, but these guys did this good. And it, and I and I just like I can't help but in that thought process say, no, because if you didn't give if you didn't put them in situations that were challenging, then you still don't know anything. And so I think he's earned his way into some different spots that are going to be challenging later in games, things like that. I don't know. Yeah. But the way this series went, it was close early in all the games, and then it blew open. And it mostly happened from the bullpen side of things. Um, Johan Ramirez and Zestrisny on on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday was the... Uh, was the Rohanzi deal that we talked about. And then today, it's really Oviedo started uh, the the scoring there in, this, in, the fifth, in the fifth. It was just the fifth inning. But then Hernandez, you know, lets a couple in. And then, um, so that's kind of where it opened up. Uh, it did start with Oviedo, but, you know, you just, can, go ahead. Can the next time we play the Cubs, can we just start off with the in half and the ribs or something? Like, oh, we oh. just hit him. You like, see, guys, every once in a while, kills us. like you're going to hear the most old school take from us. And every <laughs> once in a while, we're going to talk about statistics and don't, don't throw it his head. Just lineups and tell you that it's OK that this team never puts the same lineup out there because new. And then also we're just like, put one in his ribs. <laughs> I don't want to put one in his ribs. The guy's a good player. Uh, he has a knack for playing well against Pittsburgh. He's probably going to do the same thing again uh, next week, but we'll be in Pittsburgh. We do owe them. 100% we owe them. But we owe them, like, we, we've we just got to play better. And you know what? Can we, they throw, might... can we throw up and in and not hit him? Like... <laughs> We were talking about this the other day. We we started off Morel with a with a high and in. And it was a really interesting conversation because I said, I love it. And you said, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and I said, I think it still works. You straighten that guy out so he's not leaning over the plate and he's not going to dive out after it. And you said, yeah, but if he goes inside one more time, he's going to get a warning. <laughs> and so the hitter knows he's not going back inside. So that's actually a good point, but that's interesting. And it also kind of throws that old school versus um, new school thought process in there that it's, it's kind of fun to talk about sometimes. But anyway, um, Yuri De Los Santos is back up. He pitched in the game today, he gave up a run, a couple strikeouts. Um, they're going to have to put this thing together in ways that um, the depth isn't there right now. And so right. that's the thing that's starting to really kind of you're going to I am not going to be surprised if DeYoung gets another opportunity this year. If Dwayne Underwood gets another opportunity this year. Yeah. Rob Zestrisny's already 
in a position where he's about to be sent down and then get another opportunity later this year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, when you think yeah. about that, like you look at their roster and you see that, especially with Selby kind of being on the shelf. We don't really know. Via Lobos is another guy. Um, thought I pulled him up. Eli Via Lobos is one of those claim waiver claims that we got, or or was it a trade? How do we bring him in? Um, it was a Marlins waiver claim, I think. Excuse me. And I don't think that there was any kind of change. I think it was literally just a waiver claim. And he's in the minors right now. He's 25 years old. And let me go to Indy just to make sure I'm getting his Indy stats because he only pitched four and two-thirds um, with Miami. Well, they're triple-A. 16.1 or 16 and a third innings right now. 165 whip because of 13 walks in 16 innings, 14 strikeouts. He's got a 4-4-1 ERA. But at some point, due to just health, this guy's gonna get a shot. Yeah. <laughs> good chance. And I can't feel good about that. I can't feel good about that. One guy that you could feel good about is Carmen Majinski. He has been pitching well. He's got a 136 whip, a 316 ERA, 25 innings, 31 strikeouts, just 11 walks. 235 they're hitting against him right now. A couple save opportunities. Um, he's got a hold and a save. So I assume he blew one, which doesn't make any sense to me. That's three save opportunities. <laughs> if you've got a hold, that's a, the only way you can get a hold is if it's a save opportunity, but you don't finish the game. So that's three save opportunities. And he converted a save in one of them, a hold in another one. That's the only way to get a hold is if it's a save situation but you didn't finish the game. That's it. So mm. anyway. I thought you could get a hold in like the sixth inning. Well, you can. But it's a save situation if you pitch from the sixth to the end. And you get a save. You know what I mean? It has to be a save situation. And then you just don't... And then if you get taken out, but you were effective, then you get a hold. Excuse me. So anyway, yeah, Carver Majinski could be a guy that you could be excited about him coming up. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know, man. <laughs> We're just... And that's when I, I started saying, like, do you take up some of these starters that you feel like maybe could do it? Like Beto, like Nicholas, like Priester. I mean, Priester, I think, is probably the one that you, you wouldn't go this route, but... Do you just say, come up here and throw out of the bullpen, get a taste of the major leagues, we'll stretch you back out in the offseason? Because I, it's, you know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't definitely wouldn't be the first time that's been done. Well, that's how it always used to be done. Right. You know what I mean? Let's give you a taste of the majors by bringing you up, putting you in the bullpen, and then next year you can worry about starting. Like, I feel yeah. like that was the path for a pitcher. And now it's like, yeah, well, well we know because of, it's that whole thing where nobody gets called up until they're ready to start anymore because of the whole clock and the six years and the whole thing. It used to be, it was like, yeah, you come up and you work your way to be a starter. First things first, you get up here, you play a bench roll. I mean, that's Jordy Mercer, even though that was not that long ago, right? right. He comes up, he plays part-time, a little bit behind Clint Barmas, all that stuff until he was ready to take over. And that used to happen all the time. And eventually yeah. you take over. I don't know. It's one more old school thing that we're going to say today. <laughs> Can I talk new school? Like Jack Swinski's great. Yeah, he is. That's a new school thought. I know he strikes out. So what? People don't care about strikeouts anymore. What is he like fifth in the league in OPS? Here's the thing, though. I care about strikeouts. I'm still old school. 
he's doing it in a way like, I don't want nine of these guys, but I like what he's doing. Good yeah. conversations that, that have kind of been flown around and I've uh, been putting some stuff up on Twitter about trying to measure like his success in a way where, you know, if you just put up, if you look at his high leverage statistics, they're no good. I talked about this last week um, or Monday when you weren't on Monday, right? Correct. Yeah. I talked about this Monday. Um, I, I, we're not going to, I don't actually want to get into it. If you want to hear like a little bit about Sawinski and maybe something we can watch for the high leverage thing might not quite be it. Maybe looking at, um, win probability added might be something he's about average. He, a lot of his numbers are great, right? But when mm -hmm. win probability comes into it, he's about average. And I think if we continue to watch that number, what we want to see is we want to see that win probability added be something that he can get, you know, get up. Because high leverage situations, they're going to put in the toughest lefty they have, and he's probably going to struggle in that situation. But right. if he hits a third inning home run with two guys on that increase the win probability and he keeps doing things like that, then that win probability added is going to start increasing, and that's what we need him to do. Um, like he did... Um, like he did, you know, recently. So anyway, uh, we got to wrap this thing up here. Did you have anything else? I mean, we we didn't really get really into the bullpen woes, other than just complaining about it. Yeah, no, I I think um, I think we covered it. I think yeah. What do you got on the Brewers here? They're what? They're even five hundred. Is that right? Yeah. Even five hundred. Six straight losses, which for us is a terrible thing because that's not going to keep happening. Right. They're going to snap that probably during our series. But you've got to come away with the series or else you're not in first. Right. Knock, knock. The Reds are only one game out, but they've got to go play Houston. I don't know, man. How much do we care? I mean, anytime, anytime you're in a position where you have a shot to win the division, you care. You care. You have to. You have, you have to. have to care. You have to. And it does that make this harder to deal with? It makes it extremely, like, it makes it a lot harder to deal with. If we were in third place and we were 34 and 33, we'd probably be like, well, I mean, anytime you get swept, it's not good. But we'd probably be like, all right, we're going into Milwaukee. Let's say they're the first place team. You probably just say, like, let's get a game. Yeah. You know, let's play well. But you'd you'd be a little more mellow headed about it. But the fact that we're in first place, everybody's everywhere. You don't know what to think. You don't know what to do. All right, going into M Milwaukee. It's uh Rich Hill versus Julio Tehran, which looks like he hasn't pitched much. One and two with a one forty eight. We'll hit three home runs off him. Mitch Keller versus Wade Miley. Three and two with a 367 for Wade Miley. He's like 63 years old, and I like our lefty lineup. <laughs> Luis Ortiz and Freddie Peralta, he's five and six with a 473, which tells me that they just leave him in the game no matter what's going on. He's already got 11 decisions. <laughs> Sounds like a series win if I want to be completely one sided about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Does yeah, that I sound mean, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to this one. You got to get the Keller game at least. I mean, the thing is, is that's probably the toughest. I don't really know. I have not watched a single Brewers game this year. I've just watched their scores and hope they lose. However, I mean, you want to see this their team? Double this, A team stinks. This is <laughs> oh yeah, because that's who you get the <laughs> that's who you go see all the time. Um, th this is the kind of thing. These are good moments. I think that might be one of the best things about the fact that the Pirates are in first. They have an opportunity to go into Milwaukee and play three meaningful games. Maybe before they should. Yeah. This is experience. Because when you walk in there, you're not 34 and 33. You're a half game up. You see what I'm saying? Like, you just change the way that you look at things. Hey, we got these guys by a half game. We've got to win this series or else they're in first. 
Yeah. And so I think if you go into there with that kind of mindset, maybe that changes. Let's not think about the fact that we're 34 and 33 for the players, right? For us, right, right. we probably need to think about the fact that they're 34 and 33 and we need to calm down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it is like, I'm going to let this thing ride. Let's watch this thing play out. But we cannot like... I know we're talking. Let's trade. Let's trade. Let's let's go get this division. I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure you can't win this division with just who you have. Right. I'm not sure you need to go get somebody. The problem is, is St. Louis will. For sure. I don't think Cincinnati does. No, I think they stay put. I think put. they stay put. I think they really got something going good right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Milwaukee tears down. Yeah, really. I think I'm with you. This is going to be an interesting, like, we we saw this coming. We've known the NL Central was getting worse. Yeah. We also know that when they get good, they're going to get good, just like they did before. Hopefully, I guess. Or maybe not. Maybe just the Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got anything... Uh, you got anything else to follow up? I think I think we're all I think, I think so. we're all wrapped up. We talked yeah. long today. Sometimes we don't go this long on Thursdays, but it just felt like we had a lot to kind of vent out tonight. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a more chipper episode for Monday. Yeah, I'll be on the road, but um I'm going to make sure I can get connected, so Oh yeah, we are gonna we're gonna have to figure something out, huh? Okay. Even if it's just, you know, connected on my phone or whatever, we'll figure it out. All right. All right, let's play some music. Let's get ourselves out of here. Let's go, Bucks. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks!